In this video, I'm going to show you how psoriasis can be cured alone by just supplementation with vitamin D. I know it sounds shocking, and I'm typically not a monotherapy guy, but in certain cases, it is absolutely possible. So check this dude out. This, came, this picture came from an article I'll share with you in a couple seconds. So this is before taking vitamin D. This is six months later. Now that is amazing. So let's just say if you had this back on your own, you say, hey, I got a little blemishy thing here, a little itchy spot here. You wouldn't say this is perfect if, if you had perfect skin. So but the average person does not have perfect skin. If you had this skin, now it's like perfect. So not 100% reduction, but massive improvement from taking vitamin D. This is the article. So what do they talk about in this article? Well, uh, let's look at a quote. So this is describing vitamin D, what it does. So it's a steroid hormone. It's called, it's the active vitamin D, although they call it a vitamin, it's really a hormone. So 125 dihydroxy D. And you can see how diverse it is in our human biological system because our genome possesses, possesses 2,776 positions where the vitamin D receptor can be found. So basically, this means that 10% of the human of our human genes are directly or indirectly responsive slash regulated by vitamin D. Now, it's so important that vitamin D, 125 dihydroxy D, is produced locally in all of these tissues: bone, colon, breast, immune, prostate, skin, muscle, blood vessel, brain. Produced locally for regulating metabolism, basically deflaming those important organs. So this is the article, and let's answer these two questions. So what is the physiologic dose of vitamin D? What does that even mean? How much, let's just say that you have a nice healthy vitamin D level of 50 nanograms per deciliter. So you're 50, you're at 50. How much vitamin D do you got to take to stay at 50? And the answer is basically 4,000 IUs per day, either taking it or getting that amount of sun exposure. So this is the physiologic dose. What's the normal range of vitamin D? Remember I said 50 would be good? Here's the normal range. Okay. Well, what do we know from this study? Well, this study, they took not 4,000 IUs. They took 35,000 IUs once daily for six months. Every day for six months straight, they took 35,000 IUs. Am I saying you should do that? No, I'm showing you what they did. So here is the range of vitamin D. They found every single person at start was below 32. And after six months of taking uh, 35,000 per day, every single person was above 100. Actually, not above 100, as you can see. So 106 plus or minus 32. So on the high end, people had reached 138, which is way higher than 100, right? So is this a problem? Well, for some it would be, but for others it's not. How did the, what did they do to ensure that this would not be a problem? Well, what they did is they gave, made people ha eat a low calcium diet. So they avoided dairy and they avoided calcium supplemented enriched foods. You can see oats, rice, soy, whatever might have added calcium uh, uh, addition to it fortified. And they made sure people were hydrated properly, two and a half liters per day of water. Don't know how that relates to vitamin D specifically, but I can tell you that two and a half liters per day is a good thing that we should all do. So why calcium? Well, the reason why is because as vitamin D levels go up, so does calcium absorption, which can possibly push one to hypercalcemia. So nobody who went into hypercalcemia, even though they hit as high as 138 uh, nanograms per ml. Now, was that because of the low calcium diet or because they wouldn't have had it anyway? I can't really say for sure. But the symptoms of hypercalcemia, you get them in the nervous system, the gut, and the musculoskeletal system. So headaches, depression, achy gut pain, uh, and uh, uh, painful muscles and joints and bones, basically. And so those would be the symptoms. So they wanted to avoid those, right? So again, pre and post, fantastic. So what if taking all that, all that uh, uh, vitamin D only got you to this point, where you still had some eczema or rather psoriasis out and about on the body? Well, you know, what should you do then? Well, the fact that it went from this to this with just taking, I mean, this level of improvement with just vitamin D is you know, astounding. 
So to not have that perfect an outcome should not be surprising. And if that is the case, then you look for more pro-inflammatory issues that need to be uh, addressed. And I list all the important ones, at least as far as I can tell, all the important ones in the original D-Flame diet book. So at this point, people might be saying, well, what about other similar looking skin conditions? Like, because eczema can kind of look like this. Well, here's an eczema case. This was, sent to me, this was sent to me by a colleague. Really bad eczema. So she's 77 years of age. You can, you can read here and see that she suffered with eczema and even before eczema, other problems. So she decided to deflame herself. I forget if it was three to six months, but she went deflame diet pure and look at the outcome. Let's look at the hands. Bloody and nasty. Three to six months later, clean and nice and no problem. That is the power of deflaming. So these books can be picked up, single book copies at Amazon. Obviously right here you can see, simple, easy place to get them. Or you can link right through, through Amazon from the Deflame site, where you can also get volume discounts for all of the books. And you're already right now listening to or watching the YouTube video, so you can subscribe while you're here. And when you get over to Deflame, you can go on and uh, and uh, like slash follow the Deflame nutrition page, where I also pop up regular updates.